Krise Paul liegt scheinbar. Sie wird auf unseren unabänderlichen Willen. We have before us the opportunity to forge to unsere Opferbereitschaft for ourselves and for future generations. A new world order. A new world order. A new world order. A world for the rule of law. Not the law of the jungle. It governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, we do. We have a real chance at this new world order. An order in which a credible United Nations can use a peaceful... This is London Court. Here is a news flash. The German radio has just announced that Hitler is dead. I'll repeat that. Hitler is dead. At the end of World War II, people celebrated. Hitler was dead. After apparently taking his own life and that of his wife, Eva Braun, the commanders of the Third Reich burned their bodies and proceeded to make an escape from Berlin. At the end of World War II, people celebrated. One of those to escape was Otto Skorzeny. Officially, he was captured and tried at the Nuremberg trials, but was acquitted of all charges. According to official documents, Skorzeny then moved to Spain and died in 1975. But that's when the story gets interesting. According to Eric Berman, Skorzeny had faked his death in 1975 and ended up living in Florida, raising a family. Berman told the reporter, Don Nikoloff, that he had been dating one of Skorzeny's daughters and that Skorzeny wanted to clear the air before his death. What Skorzeny told Berman sounded like the ramblings of an old senile man. It wasn't until Skorzeny produced a shoebox full of photographs of him as an SS officer that Berman started to take him seriously. Skorzeny had claimed that he had been ushered into the CIA by Operation Paperclip. This same operation brought 50,000 Nazi scientists, intelligence operatives, and mind control specialists to the United States at the end of World War II. Part of the document. The bad news is that shocking reality there was a safe haven for some of those Nazis, rocket scientists, top CIA asset in, in Austria, for example. Uh, at six foot four, scar-faced Otto Skorzeny was one of Hitler's favorite officers, the ideal Nazi. He was a prisoner in a POW camp, where he was organizing a clandestine group of former SS men and paratroopers, according to a confidential Allied report. It is believed that while Skorzeny was interned, he founded, or participated in the founding of, a splinter group of Die Spinne, the so-called spider network helping escape Nazis. Though cleared of war crimes by an American military court in September 1947, Skorzeny was still wanted for war crimes in Czechoslovakia, Russia, and the Allied-occupied Germany. In 1948, while awaiting these new trials, Skorzeny escaped from the Darmstadt internment camp in Germany with outside help of former SS contacts who arrived disguised as American military police. They escorted Skorzeny out the gates and into a car. He disappeared and is believed to have traveled throughout Europe visiting his Odessa contacts. Using the alias Rolf Steinbrauer, Skorzeny even slipped back into Germany where some believe he was organizing former Nazis on behalf of a new ally, the American CIA. Though there were protests and calls for Skorzeny's arrest, charges against him were finally dropped. For nearly three decades after the conquest of Germany, Skorzeny openly maintained contact with escaped Nazis. He managed immense sums of money and financed various right-wing and neo-Nazi organizations around the world. 
Yet the ex-commando played a cat and mouse game when asked directly about the underground activities of the group called Odessa. This was a very unpleasant guy and he had a lot of resources behind him. He put himself forward as a person whom everybody knew was the open face of Odessa, except when you asked him, he said he would say that he'd never heard of it. Skorzeny also made some bizarre claims that would tie together everyone from Nikola Tesla to George Bush Sr. and change the way we look at the war and how the world has changed since then. Skorzeny started his story with Nikola Tesla. While Tesla was trying to change the world by delivering free energy, wealthy tycoons like J.P. Morgan were standing in the background, always trying to exploit the genius's mind. The only thing that seemed to protect Tesla from all these Wall Street sharps was Tesla's closest advisor, George H. Shree C. He was the man that would handle Tesla's business and patents. Only three days before his death in 1943, Scherf was the last person to see Tesla alive. When Tesla's body was discovered, someone had raided his offices and removed all of his documentation and experiments. Upon further inspection, it would appear that George H. Schrieff Sr. was actually a German spy and had been manipulating Tesla for years. Tesla would write letters how Schrieff's son, George Jr., was constantly into things and caught sneaking about in his office. Skorzeny claimed that Hitler had trained George Jr. as a spy and sent him to America covertly under the adoption of Senator Prescott Sheldon Bush. Under his new identity, George Herbert Walker Bush, he would enter the American military and spy for the Nazi regime. You can trace the Bush family to almost every major event in Americana over the last 50 years. George Sr. has had alleged ties to JFK, Watergate, Iran-Contra, and the Franklin cover-up. And though the story is sketchy and unreal, all the events have been proven to have facts behind them. 